Oh, baby. Wow, look at all that. That's a mouse nest right there. She has treasures, all these treasures. Buried in the belly of the beast. All right, so this is the belly pan underneath the, the cat. This would be the front of the tractor. That's the rear of the tractor. There's six bolts that should be holding it around the outside. There were two over there that were, one was the proper size, one was too small. There was one over here, and that's it. That's all that was holding this thing up. There were no bolts in these two bolt holes back here that hold it up on the bottom of the pan. And this is what it looks like underneath the dang thing. That's a mouse nest, that's a mouse nest. I see like, you know, there's a, here's a bolt that was lost. Here's some sort of metal bracket. Actually, that's probably the bracket I cut off. Yeah, that is, that's the bracket I cut off. Found it. I mean, sticks and dirt and grease, you know, I'm gonna kinda scoop all this out, sift through it, make sure there's nothing important and then just clean it. So I took the belly pan off so that when we power wash the machine, not only can we power wash the bottom, but also all of this, the dirt and sediment can just fall straight down below, and then I can just scoop it off the gravel drive to, uh, to throw it away. So that's what it's supposed to look like. So there was about 15 gallons of saturated sand and dirt and oil and built up crap in that belly pan.
you've got to see this. So we are at the back of the tractor here. I took this battery box off just to kind of get a better look in here and I can wash a bit easier. Look at this. See that gap? You can see right through there? This should be tight. That is like a half inch gap. This is the this is where the loader arm meets the actual chassis. And it's a half inch off here. Crazy. Bolts, you know, barely hand tight. The bottom of uh fuel tank on this side no bolt no bolt no bolt one two of them missing the spar one this cover here loose bolt missing bolt missing bolt another loose one oh wow hand tight i can literally loosen it by hand the other side hand tight they're not even hand tight and I haven't touched this loose bolt man I don't even know how this machine operated and then you should see down here under the tractor so right here is one of the bolts that holds the actual roller frame onto the chassis here and it's just loose and it's not like it's just a one that one's loose that one's loose that one over there is not tight oh goodness gracious great balls of terrible maintenance and then the belly pan has three bolts on each side this one's broken off it had one here it had one there the other side only had one of the three there's supposed that there's two bolts at the back that bolt the belly pan on those were missing or broke most likely broken off in there this old beast has been neglected that's the battery door there's the battery pan another big mouse nest was in there i took out the seat the floor panels the diesel air cleaner so i can get access to all this when i pressure wash it'll make it much much easier to see what i'm doing and then we got another issue here so these are the hydraulic hoses that go to the lower ram the lower hydraulic cylinder that does the lifting on this side i wondered why this one was all kind of crammed in there well it's not the right hose so they use whatever hose they had that fit and it bent and right here it's leaking so i'm gonna have to replace that hose for sure I'm, i want to replace all of them but that one needs done soon with one the correct length which i believe the donor machine has one we'll have to check and then we got something going on here something going on along the head gasket on the diesel right here at the back of the machine you can see it's leaking oil and we're going to address all these issues. It's going to require a crap ton of pulling out broken bolts. And I will be an expert by the time I'm done. So, yeah, it's a bit crazy. But a little TLC. And this old boy will be back up and running. And we got some dogs. Hi, guys. Hi, pups. Yeah, hi. So last night I went ahead and replaced this leaking hydraulic hose with one of the better ones from the, the extra cylinder that I had just to have something in there that's not currently leaking. So that'll be better for now. This is what it actually should look like rather than being all bent up. 
at an angle. That hose that was in there was just too long. It wasn't the right one. So this will be much better. Once I get around to doing the hoses, we'll change it out. But for now, it will uh, it'll work. Pony motor has this issue where sometimes something gets on this pulley here and this belt just slips. And instead of actually turning the belt, it's just spinning on there. Now, I think that's a combination of the belt itself is bad and needs to be replaced because it's stretched. And also 
there's oil leaking down in here that I think is getting on the pulley, causing it to slip. So that's gonna be definitely something I need to fix soon because <laughs> once it catches, the pony motor starts right up. But for right now, it's kind of a pain in the butt. It's leaking like exhaust fumes out this breather when it's tightened down. When I loosen it, I think it's better. I'm guessing that probably means that this thing is clogged. So that's the crankcase breather. So I gotta take a look at that. Right there you can see the head gasket leak. Can you see the bubbling? the back of the diesel engine now that I look at it the head gas is leaking up here too over here is an exhaust leak Definitely got a pretty good hydraulic leak here. Right in this seal here, in this lift ram hydraulic cylinder for the bucket. See it's dripping pretty good. Looks like this one has a leak too. See that head gasket leak there. Now that it's pressure washed, I can see it's leaking kind of up front here too. The other lift cylinder for the bucket has a slow leak, definitely nothing like the other side. And same with the bottom, there's a slow leak. Pony motor, pony motor is leaking right here. There's a gasket for this pipe, this little 90 that is directly behind the oil fill for the pony motor. So it shouldn't be too hard to get to, and that should be a simple fix. So these are the exhaust manifolds 
four, or no, these are the intake manifolds right here. And there's four cylinders. This is a Caterpillar four cylinder diesel engine. So this is your intake manifold, one, two, three, four. And I don't know what numbers they actually are as far as, you know, which one's one and which one's four, but it's leaking exhaust out of the side or out of the gasket. And I, I'm not sure if that's right or not. I have to do some research. Okay, I found a, there's a coolant leak, a water leak. You can see right here, right above my finger, there's a water leak right below this head gasket. Ah, the pressure washing revealing all these wonderful adventures we're going to take on. There's something going on right there. And I think this valve cover might be... have some issues. I know right here we have a one of the caps for the get valve cover nut is broke. In reality though, this is not a real hard motor to get into. It's pretty straightforward. Still have no leaks in the in the cool or the radiator. Well, it doesn't look too bad in here. No real nastiness in here. I mean, there is some dirt, quite a bit of dirt. So I definitely need to flush this. Drain the oil is a huge thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull the pan. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. One thing, I this is the valve cover. And I probably need a new gasket for it because it looks like it's almost gone like even over here it looks like it's not even really there but there was some water in here like I can't even right there you see that see that that liquid moving fa fast that's water so there was a pretty good little puddle of water I mean maybe double or triple that size that spilled out and I don't know if that was just condensation that's a normal buildup in valve covers like this. Doesn't worry me too much because in here I don't see a lot of rust. And, you know, there might have been some condensation that had been sitting in here for a long time. Obviously, I didn't take this valve cover off when we were at the other building when we first got the machine running. But um, hopefully just flushing the, the oil and cleaning this out will be all it needs other than the head gasket which that's a whole nother problem so we'll deal with that when we get to it so this is the valve cover this goes on basically the last thing goes right on top of the motor and i happen to be digging through or looking through some of the gaskets and things that i had from the other building when i uh, got the machine and it looks like this is a replacement valve cover seal in good enough shape. I mean, it's a cork, it's, you know, definitely still pliable, a little dirty. I can wipe that down. So since I've got it already, I might as well just pop this one out and uh, put that one in. Looks like they installed this with some uh, RTV. That's what this black rubbery stuff is. Not totally sure if there should be a gap right there or not. It almost looks like something got kind of broke at some point. There's a space there, but over here, it, look, it sh looks to me like it should have a space here and a small space here, not this big gap. Who knows? Have to look at the, the new part 
Maybe the other uh, valve cover off the parts machine is better. I have to go look at it. Since this is not going to be the last time I'm going to have to take this valve cover off, for right now I'm going to install this thing just dry without anything. Fits really well. Nice and snug all the way around. Doesn't feel loose. Yeah, that'll do for now. I'm gonna stick the valve cover back on. And I guarantee we're probably gonna have to come back and pull it off again. I'm definitely gonna have to replace these seals. So in the, under this cover are the fuel filters for this machine. We're gonna take a look at them now. Whoop. Well, we got fuel. <laughs> Those have seen better days. But honestly, they're not too bad. You can still see the pattern of the, the cloth. So basically these are cloth woven filters. As you can see, that's just full of uh, diesel fuel. So this is the fuel filter. Just a wound up ball of twine, really and the fuel is forced to go down through it and looks like in the middle there's like a metal mesh and then this shaft just goes right up through it and holds it all together so i need to get four more of these replace them even though these don't look bad these filters don't look bad at all i I saw someone else pull the whole fuel filter and the whole square of all four of these filters were just really nasty. But the, these ones don't look too bad. So here's all the oil and grease that dropped out of it when I was pressure washing it. Now, granted, that's not all oil and grease. There's rocks and some of the finds from the gravel drive here, but I'd rather scoop it all up and get rid of it so my dogs don't end up eating any of the old oil or the old grease than worry about saving the gravel. So that's why I'm getting rid of it all. So right here, this unit is the uh, starting engine clutch assembly. And it's got this cover that you can take off to check and refill the oil. Well, I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a gasket under there, from what I know. And there wasn't one, I just pulled the cap off. So I'm going to make a new one. It looks to me like it won't matter, it just has to basically be a flat square with two holes in it. So.
So this is why I keep scraps of, you know, gasket paper because situations like this, it's just perfect. And just like that, a gasket. No ordering, no waiting, no looking something up. Just pure, quick, easy, make it, move on. Since I know this is a part that I'm gonna have to open up again, I am going to coat the gasket with grease. A little bit of marine grease to make it so that it will release and not get stuck to the metal when I need it to come off and I need to open it back up. I know a lot of you have really been enjoying the Old Bread series and Salvage Workshop as a channel. Would you be at all interested in owning a piece of Old Bread's history? I am thinking about taking the track chains apart and offering the track links and even the old track pads from the old track chain as a memorabilia for sale. I was thinking of you know, spray paint and salvage workshops logo onto them, signing them and offering them up as as a way to raise money to help me afford some of the bigger pieces of the undercarriage that I need. The upper rollers that I need, the lower ch track chains I'd like to do, as well as the idler adjusting uh, nut and screw and potentially some idler parts. Plus I have to do the head gaskets, I have to do all the filters. There's a bunch of hydraulics that I gotta replace some seals on a lot of the cylinders. If that's something you'd like to do and you'd like to help me afford and support the channel in regards to, you know, getting old red back up and rocking and rolling, let me know. I'd, I'd absolutely appreciate it and I'd love to know your thoughts.